What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. We're back in the contract, boys. Vibe. Not a recap, not a preview. Something completely different, but related. The uh, health issues and the Sharks have blessed the content, boys, with content for months on end coming up. So this is our first foray into the wide world of GMs. The Sharks are looking for a new one. So we're going to break down. We have 14 names of people that have been rumored in the past uh, or have been GMs. And we're going to give you guys kind of an overview of what, who these people are. This is by no means an exhaustive list. And I'm sure there's going to be candidates that will come up uh, that we don't know about, especially the ex players. We don't know what ex players are interested in becoming management. Um, but this is going to be an initial list and we'll kind of just go over it more on a high level. And as we get more news and as, as names come out, we will break down further into their track records. But for dad today, high level 14 names, 10, well, I'll say 10 on the good spectrum side. They could be a little bit bad, but they're more on the good side. And then four absolutely knows. So let's roll. You're Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is co-host JD, the Super Nintendo Chalmers to my Willie. <laughs> Except for between four and five. That's Willie time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a, the, sh- the shinning is great. You don't want to get sued. <laughs> you want to get sued. Oh, that's weird. The like usually gets off on the third floor. Just gets stabbed in the back that entire episode. <laughs> just every, I can get uh, you back to our own dimension, but we got to go quick. <laughs> Yes. This is indeed a disturbing universe. Um, that's the best trios of horror because you've got the shinning, you've got the time traveling toaster, uh, and then you've got Nightmare Cafeteria, I believe. Yeah, where they're yeah the sloppy jimbos. Yes, you might <laughs> say, say that Uder, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of all. <laughs> it's it's inside all. all of us. You could even say we killed Uder and <laughs> cooked him up and fed him to us. Ah, scratch that last one. <laughs> Ah, oh, what a great! Uh, I love to. If something always comes along and helps us. Millhouse <laughs> falls in the blunder. Ah, uh, something always comes along and helps the Simpson children. <laughs> Do you have a preferred one of those three? The shitting one's so great. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so a... good. I do like the time traveling toaster. Um, and he just goes freaking of, ham. <laughs> yeah, one of the funniest things is when Homer finally gets mad and he punches all of the all of the creatures. He drops the biggest left hook on the mosquito, and it's so funny uh it's 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 really good that episode that episode is just funny from start to finish um renegulation is also something i say on a, on a regular basis <laughs> just let the hooks do their jobs <laughs> <laughs> uh. Mo's got his little break oh just let the hooks do their jobs is a great uh is, is a great line yeah okay do we Sharks, speak doing their jobs <laughs> yeah we uh the Sharks have never really hired a GM in our lifetimes. Well, that we not care that we were relevant. Um, <laughs> somebody not on this list, Dean Lombardi. I saw somebody comment on maybe one of our stuff or something yeah. else. Could Dean Lombardi come back? That would be one of the dumbest ideas. Uh, we're just, I'm assuming he's just out of hockey at this point. I have no idea what he's doing. I don't care. If they bring back Dean Lombardi, I'm just not watching hockey. So uh, <laughs> let's just move on from that one. So right. we're going to start off with one, two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10. 10 so oh you wow you a little premature nedulation mm. there uh man that is a scary picture told you <laughs> jeez that, that, that man's seen some shit if you're watching on youtube <laughs> so oh, man, we, oh my he's seen some numbers <laughs> oh my yeah yeah it's, those spreadsheets are scary yep. uh the first 10 people are going to be more to the good side so these are people that obviously we think would be good candidates or have a track record that's good or have never been to GM. And then the last four are going to be no. So the first person up is Eric Tulski. Assistant if you're GM watching, in Carolina. This is a good uh, YouTube episode. Cause we have like graphics and 
kind of what they did and what they look like because every hockey white man looks the same, uh, basically. So we're not trying Tulski. to uh, not Tulski. Tulski looks will looks stay with you for the rest of your life. So <laughs> Tulski. <laughs> Assistant GM to the <laughs> fam- 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 famously found in cornfields everywhere. Uh, he actually famously started at SB Nation on Broad Street Hockey, uh, writing for the Flyers. They made his own website and they got hired uh, to be the computer boy for the Hurricanes. Anyway, continue. Yes, he's. Uh, I mean, the Carolina Hurricanes have been one of the best teams in the NHL they, for a while. Of course, he cup champions, as you like to uh, famously, you know. Uh, can't get, can't get over the first round, but boy, they take a lot of expected goals. They do. So, um, but I mean, they've they've been very good, and they draft really well, and they're really good at finding talent, and not afraid to, you know, s- small European boys to come play hockey for them. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to know exactly what uh, with with a lot of the AGMs, it's hard to know exactly what they what do they do compared to the gm but telski obviously very famously has led the charge on analytics um in hockey so it would be at a a very forward thinking move uh more so than a lot of these other guys probably well we don't know what the other guys they may, they may yeah. be hockey men but also progressive but telski for sure would be a move that would be completely opposite of, of what they normally do and honestly i think telski probably gives the best chance to like have um a rebuild d, d no dw well yes but dw jr stick around um hmm. i don't know how he works with joe will but that's for them to decide yep next next chris mcfarland so hot commodity and i think i think this would be my pick maybe um mm-hmm. right now in the early stages uh assistant gm to joe sackick in colorado previously was in columbus for like ever I think like 16 years or something like that. Um, don't be fooled by the photo. He is 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does not look 50, but he is 50. Uh, Colorado, sick. Joe Sackick. They've been very good for a long time. Yes. Yeah, and, and Chris McFarland has been on. He would have got interviewed by Montreal, but he doesn't speak French. Uh, I think he was in around, sniffing around the Pittsburgh job before uh, when Rutherford stepped down. And then definitely with the Anaheim and Chicago jobs, uh, his name has been brought up a lot. So, High, high value name here um, for a guy who's never been a sold GM. Yep. Colorado's good. <laughs> you should hire that, him. That, your analysis in Colorado <laughs> <Yeah>. is good. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. That's, Colorado's good. You should probably hire those guys. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, <clears throat> moving right along here. Emily Castonguay. God, do we have to do this again? Yes. <laughs> One of the most qualified people to run a hockey team. <laughs> yes. Not my fault she has boobs. Just get over yourselves. Uh, was in the running for the Montreal Canadiens job. Uh, didn't get it and was immediately hired by the Canucks. Now, a little caveat here. She was also the first. I think you have it there. She was the first female player agent. Yes. She uh, represented Lexi Lafayette, uh, to, of uh, among other people. But yeah, so that's one of her higher profiles. Yeah, just... and and the thing here is that GM jobs are scarce. There's 32 of them. They don't come up, and the old boys club keeps those things on lock. Uh, yep. So even though she just got hired by Vancouver, what, like two months ago? Yeah, it was kind of mid-season. So right when the uh, – yeah, about middle of the season. So Whenever the Habs hired Gorton and Hughes, they – She was hired like hired the over. next day. Yeah. Literally the next day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so would she be available? I don't know, but typically when you're typically when you're getting offered like a promotion, like if San Jose was like, "Hey, Emily, we want to offer you a job uh, as assistant GM here," Vancouver would say no because it's a sideways move. But yep. typically, when a lot of these upper positions come up, you let them go interview. You see them with NFL all the time. You'll yep. see like an offensive coordinator be allowed to go. Uh, interview for head coach job. So Jean the list because she's super, super qualified. Maybe not be on the list because we just don't know how Vancouver would react, but I hope that they would let her go for an interview to be a GM. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like you said, I mean, she's, she's been an agent for a long time, you know, almost got the Montreal job and was hired right away by Vancouver. And I mean, you know, Vancouver's been on a great turnaround. So you would, 
you know, she seems like she's kind of more of a forward thinking, you know, kind of GM. So um, we'll see. I think the the one thing, you know, is she just hasn't really done it too long. I think she still looks qualified, but if you'd like to see a little bit longer track record, that's all. So, so yeah, going from love- a, an assistant GM for like two months to a GM, you know, so. Well, she, I mean, I, I like the agent path. That's always yeah, fun. We're, that's seeing, a, yeah. we're seeing early, early returns with Ken Hughes be all right. Um, yep. so I, I kind of like the unique path yeah. of an agent. So that, that would be cool. Um, would be also cool to just have the first woman GM in hockey. That would just be neat. Uh, yes. Not saying that's the reason they should hire her, everybody, but uh, would be cool. A little bonus, a little yes. treat. All right, guys, before we get back to potential general managers for the San Jose Sharks, we want to take a quick break and talk to you guys about our new friends over at Shady Rays. Shady Rays, sunglasses I use. I've personally been using them for like three years now. Uh, they are an independent sunglass company that gives uh, you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, premium high-end finishes, also something you won't find Everywhere else is the Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Shady Rays includes loss and broken protection on every pair. They'll send you a brand new pair of glasses if you lose them or no matter what happens. So give them a try. If you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com. Use code locked on to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code locked on for the best deal of the season 50% off two or more pairs of shade ray glasses, backed by over 150,000 verified five star reviews. Bet online is your number one source for all your sports betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league news, reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the major league baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Martin, Martin Madden. Madden. Would, I Honestly, I when I saw the name, I thought it was John Madden. I was like, he's an assistant coach, but I forgot. Martin Madden. <laughs> yes. uh, assistant GM in Anaheim. He didn't get promoted? Uh, no, they're, yeah, he's still the assist, I think. He got told no when Montreal asked to interview him. <laughs> Anaheim said no. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's still assistant GM. He was Not also, allowed. yeah, so he's assistant GM um, for the past two years before that. He was director of amateur scouting, basically for the past, like, 10 years before that for the Ducks. Um, then he also worked for the Canes and Rangers as well back in, uh, you know, a lot like 20 years ago. So, uh, yeah, more of your more of your traditional hockey men. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the, uh, the the Ducks have been very good at uh, drafting recently. And you've seen as he's gotten kind of more power that the drafts for the Ducks have gotten much better. So mm-hmm. I think well, I think one thing that the Sharks have to wrestle with, obviously, the whole like we're trying to win now is. Do they need a GM that's going to be able to make trades and add pieces to the agent core? Or are they going to want somebody who's going to be able to continue to draft? Yeah. Um, Cause obviously some of these guys, like when we get to somebody else, they were, he was good at adding pieces to a core. But he's awful at drafting. So not everybody's good at everything. And you got to kind of decide which way you want to go. So Martin Madden, an interesting choice. I don't I, personally, I don't know. I taught about Martin Madden, but. It seems like gets, the ducks kind of want to hang on to him if they're not. Just make him the go. GM then. God damn it. Yeah, so I don't know. What is it, is. Isn't their GM spot open still because of Bob Murray passing? Something like that. Uh, was there also, I had, a, I had a Costco hot dog and I'm burping it up now. Oh my god, <laughs> nice! Oh, good for you, buddy. Oh, it's a dollar fifty is amazing. Yeah, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think they have a, I think they just have a couple of assistants right now. They don't have, oh no, uh, Pat Verbeek. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he yes. just got hired. So right. So Poach Martin Madden, he didn't even get the job. There you go. Yeah, he's just waiting for his position. Well, job, we'll so. find out if he's on the list, and we'll do a deeper dive. I'm not. Yep. I'm not. I'm not super certain on, on, on Martin Madden. Matthew Darsh, Stan Darsh, <laughs> <laughs> geologist supreme. Yes. Uh, director of hockey ops for Tampa Bay. Uh, played in the NHL for a while. Just honestly, he could just roll in interviews and be like, I work for Tampa Bay. 
<laughs> slap down his cup. Just throw down some rings. The uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Pat Riley maneuver. Yes. Do that. That would be sick. He also interviewed for the Montreal job or was rumored to be in on the Montreal job. Um, one of these guys that is going to be a GM and is like one of the hot, young, rising GM candidates that are in the world. So um, definitely somebody that I want the Sharks to interview uh, at, yeah. at the bare minimum. Yeah, because it's, again, look at how Tampa is run and, you know, the the type of players that they want and they look to acquire and, you know, they're, they draft well, they develop well, they, they're good at trading, like, you know, they're good at acquiring players and stuff like the cap they, is mostly fine. They're ca- yeah. And, you know, I think he, that that's the type of guy where they can slide into the Sharks and kind of be able to meld all those pieces together. So, yeah. And he may not necessarily be uh, Iserman or Breezebois, but like you're in the he system, can, you're learning. Yeah, and you you know, you know who to hire in that system to bring over. Yeah, and he's he's been stuff. yeah, and he's been yeah. around Breezeball and I have been long enough that he 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 knows stuff now. Yep. Um <laughs> and things. <laughs> and so. Things. Things and stuff. Yeah. He definitely, would be interesting. Yeah, definitely, definitely on the short list for me personally. Yep. Trevor Timmins, uh assistant GM in Montreal. Uh previously scouted Ottawa, Montreal was widely regarded as having a lot of good drafts up to uh, the Mayu pick. Don't really know. Apparently Timmins was not on board with the Mayu pick and then resigned shortly after. Um, don't really know how that all shook out, but uh, Montreal's drafting was, was seen as a, as a really strong point in the development in Laval. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is a guy who is also, I believe he was like director of scan. They did a sharks thing where the director of scouting and the AGMs and stuff all kind of mixed around roles the way that Tim Burke and Joe Will and uh, and Doug Wilson Jr. have done. So just a solid guy who's waiting for his shot to be GM. Um, not necessarily the most well-known name, but definitely one of those choices that could be under the radar and he's not your typical GM or retread where you come in and he makes moves um, and has a different, little bit different of an idea. Um, and I mean, if he can yep. get a Nick Suzuki and a Cole Caulfield and a Romanov and yep. for San Jose, Hey, that means that means that, but yeah. if that, I think he'd be more along the path of if San Jose wants player development scout, like drafting style GM next, he would be more in line rather than like probably like in Emily Castonguay um, or, a Tulski, well, not Tulski, Tulski's more of a draft guy, but um, a Madden or a McFarland where it's, hey, we need to negotiate well, find pieces. Um, yeah, where he's he's going to be drafting, especially, which might not be the worst, especially when you have a, an aging core when mm-hmm. you have a lot of money kind of tied up, like trying to find these gems in the draft that you can, mm-hmm. you know, kind of surround them and then eventually take over as your core, so. Yep. Yeah, not opposed to it. We just don't really know which way the Sharks are going to go. We haven't really, do, do, we'll we'll dive into that later, but we yep. haven't really yet. So, Mike Fuda. He's on the good list because he's been talked about a lot. I think, I think personally, I'd put him on, on the bad list. Um, he's apparently a senior consultant to the GM of Carolina. Famously worked for the Kings forever. Uh, ever in a day. Runs. Yeah. yeah, part of their cup runs. But he's been out of hockey for like a few years now. He went on Sportsnet last year and basically begged for a job on online. Uh, not not for me uh, personally. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. JD, do you? I have you nothing went, else you went, to add. You went to Mike Fuda. <laughs> I have nothing to add. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, um, his contract just straight up didn't get renewed. Uh, but he did like he was vice president, director of player personnel, director of amateur scouting. I don't know. It would it would be a little bit different than the typical retreads. He's never been a GM, um, but I think there's a lot of lot of kings. When you look at the kings over the years, I, I don't know if I want Mike Fuda. Yep. Here's a fun one. <laughs> Mike Gillis uh, was the GM of the Vancouver Canucks from 2008 to 2014. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows this, or if you're a newer fan, the Vancouver Canucks went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2011, most in due large part to Mike Gillis's moves. He took the core they had with Luongo and, and friends uh, and added a bunch of Kessler, I think was the other major piece on that. Um, the Sedins, 
and he took those pieces and he added a whole bunch around it to make the best Vancouver Canucks team that's ever existed. Um, not without his his wars, he was run out of town. Um, but I think he was ownership really really didn't do him any favors. And this is the kind of guy that if you want uh, somebody who's going to take a core and add pieces and make cup runs and, and things like that, he's gonna be good. His drafting was pretty bad yep. overall. He would need a solid drafter. And another big thing is that he's been out of hockey for seven year, or eight years now. Yeah. Uh, he's wanted to get back in. He famously, a couple years ago, uh, or last year, his son tweeted out his PowerPoint uh, that he presented to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was really good. It was actually, it was actually refreshing and, and forward-thinking and, and really good. And I think if you're going to go the GM retread route, Mike Gillis, a guy who – took a team and got success uh it'd be better than some of the options we're going to talk about later yeah like you said if, if you're the sharks and you your mo has been we're going to try to make the playoffs and try to contend again soon this would be a guy who can kind of wheel and deal and add those pieces around and a core to try to bring him to the next level so you know you're that's where you would really want to know what to the find. sharks are trying to do. That's kind of what the sharks are trying to do, but then you really need to try to find somebody who's strong drafter to, to kind of pair with him to, you know, that's where like a Doug Wilson jr. Where it's like, you hope he would stick around to, to run the draft type of thing. But yeah. So I, I there's some issues and we'll, we'll get into it later. I don't yeah. know if he's going to get a, uh, um, an interview, but it would definitely be, it's definitely somebody I would interview. And see, because like you might be surprised, yeah. It's, inter- it's, inter- it's it's interesting. It's more interesting than friggin' Peter Torelli, who we're going to talk about. So <laughs> yes. All right. Before we finish up and look at some of the uh, general managers that are not so high on our list, uh, we want to take a quick break and talk to you about RockAuto.com. So RockAuto.com is a family website that helps you find parts for your car without having to go through the annoying local chain store where you go in, you ask for a part, they kind of clack on their computer. You don't know when they ask a thousand questions about your car. Um, and they only have so many products in their warehouse. So why go through the stress of doing that when you have computers with the access to rockout.com in your home and in your pocket, you save time and money when using rockout.com. So why choose up to spend up to 30, 50, even hundred percent more for the same parts from a chain store or auto dealership? Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you need, including brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, new carpet, windshield wipers. So go explore their easy-to-use website today and find those solutions you need for your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available in your car or truck right locked on in their How'd You Hear Bus box. That way they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. Pat Brisson, I like that you put his current position as super agent. Yes. <laughs> agent to the stars. Uh, he's probably the most famous NHL agent. Um, Famously, maybe... does not have any sharks under on no. any work. Yes. No. So. Hmm. Uh, he, uh, I, I guess Dan Milstein may be the other most famous one because he deals with, he's pretty outspoken. He's a Fleury's agent, Russian agent. Um, Pat Brisson is Brendan Brisson's dad, actually. Uh mm-hmm. He's French. He was also linked to the Habs rumors. He's he's French. Um, also linked to the Habs. Is he French? Didn't get it. <laughs> he keeps saying he's French. Did I? Oh, I don't like know. twice in a row. <laughs> I think I was I trying know. to do the Habs thing and then got lost yeah. in there. Um, he's French. So Pat Pat Brisson, he's French. Uh, noted Frenchman. <laughs> noted noted Frenchman Brisson. Uh, I like it from an agent standpoint. We, I, 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 I'm not opposed to going outside the usual hamster wheel of candidates. Yeah. Again, if if you're trying to build from the the current core and try to add pieces, having an agent who knows, you know, who's going to have relationships with every team, is going to have relationships with a ton of players and stuff like that. Like having that connections and you know being able to wheel and deal and make trades that way. Yeah. So, because if, if, yeah, if you're if you're trying to, that's how you have to add. You have to free agents, and you're gonna have to try to make some trades. So, yeah, and if he's got a good idea for a plan for how to do the strikes, I, I would not be opposed to. My um, problem is he presented it in French. 
should do it. He should do it in German. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Papersong, he's French. Uh, <laughs> it, it would be an interesting choice. Scott Mellonby, not French. Um, he is assistant general in Montreal for like seven years. He uh, was also part of that weird. He'd be the GM, then he'd be the director of scouting, then he'd be whatever. They did the mm -hmm. same thing the Sharks did. Uh, famously a good NHL player for 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 like twenty years. He resigned after not getting the Habs <laughs> GM job, or was told that he's not in the running. He was like, "All right, deuces," and just straight up put his uh, put his resignation. And so he's been a, he's been an FA. I respect uh, it. <laughs> so. Yeah, you got to you got to respect the cojones. Hasn't been an actual GM, and I think he's one of these guys that, yeah, he was a, a player and stuff. Montreal did have a lot of good things going for it um, and a lot of bad things, so there's always that trepidation with Montreal. Um, would be interested. I, I would also put him on the short list to, uh, to take over. Nothing? You got nothing? Nothing. <laughs> okay. On to the four baddies. The ones that we don't want anything to do with. Paul Fenton. Senior advisor in Florida for some reason. He was a Minnesota GM uh, famously one for season. one year, yes. one season. He made the weird uh, quote about the lizard tongue uh, with Matt Zuccarello or, or whatever. Uh, he, I believe he was also the one that did the Victor Rask for Nino Niederreiter trade. Ugh, yeah. if, I, th I think where he just called up Carolina was like, hey, do you want Nino Niederreiter? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like what would you offer the like victor rask and he was like okay and the deal literally got done in like 20 minutes love it he's it's got awful. things to do <laughs> 20 minutes let's go he's on the clock truly also, former shark he got true shark's legend uh he's, he knows the he knows the place uh yes. truly one of the worst gms we've ever seen mm. no thank you no thank you but he's gonna get an interview they always do oh yeah look at that smile how could you say no but yeah, scored 11 goals. I uh, was part of the uh, first Sharks team. So <laughs> cool. Yep. Oh, look at that. Look at that sexual power just <laughs> oozing from the screen right now. Uh, this is amazing. Me and Kyle <laughs> for once. <laughs> no, it is the man on screen. It's Marc Bourgeauvin. Uh He's French. Um, <laughs> Noted. <laughs> currently senior advisor at LA. He was obviously very famously the Montreal GM uh, for nine years. Yeah, up and down. He did the Shea Weber <laughs> PK trade. He also signed Carey Price to a lifetime contract. Uh, he drafted Logan Mayu. He made some other questionable decisions and trades, uh, but took also, them to the Stanley Cup Finals. Part of the uh, the Chicago Blackhawks scandal. He was acquitted, and he didn't know anything. Like as far as the evidence goes, we, he was not involved. <laughs> Yeah, there's no text, there's no emails. <laughs> he wasn't in the room. Like the, yeah. it seems on the surface that he didn't know. Does do people actually not know at that level in the organization? Probably not, but there's no actual evidence saying that he was involved in any sort of way. It's not like Quenville or anything like that. So yeah. um, but he was part of that team. Um, yes. so there's that. Definitely thinks more like an old hockey man uh than anything. He uh famously threw the puck in his own net against San Jose when he played for St. Louis. Uh, which is sick. If you ever want to look up that clip, he grabs it and he goes to throw it around the net and he throws it straight into his own net. It's awesome. Um, so look that up. Definitely don't want him. Uh, the the way he, the Montreal tenure crashed and burned, that I, I would rather go in a new direction. Yep. Agreed. But that suit, though. He is sexual, though. Do you think when you bring out that, when you get a teal suit, because he had like the red suit for like the game seven? I hope so. The, do you think do he gets know. his sexual powers from a tent? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or fish. <laughs> uh, here's one. No, no, I yeah. forgot that I told you to put him on. Yes. Here. <laughs> this, is we, this is when we become Kraken fans. <laughs> oh my God. If they hire Jim Benning, I'm just over it. Can you look to the north? Look to my city I'm living in, Vancouver. What an absolute trash fire. <laughs> Jim Benny is truly horrendous. No. He's going to get an interview, get interviews, but no, for the love of all that is holy and the sanctity of this world. No. 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 Get him off my screen. 
<laughs> but think of the overpaid fourth line the Canucks think had. of the memes sure the memes dude the content with boys would never run out of content with Jim Benning that's the general oh, manager we would have to hire a content intern we dude the content factory would have get expanded yeah yeah Jeez, Jim Benning, truly, not truly noted, awful, truly awful, terrible game. GM. So. Oh, so bad. I think it's our last and one. last <laughs> and certainly least. <laughs> Look at that Look. picture. <laughs> Why did you? It looks like Tobias <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of like his glasses really like bifurcate his head. There's a lot of upper head going on in this photo. Oh, he blew uh, that's, a, that's, here. A, that's a sick stash though. Yeah, that's he a did solid Ned Flanders. Yeah. It is. Look at that. There's like it is. It's good good. width. Looks yeah. full. Nice height. It's, yep. a, it's a classic soup strainer. Uh, of course, we're talking about Peter Torelli. Chia Pete. <laughs> I don't think he's apparently currently the VP of hockey operations for St. Louis. God help yep. us. Yep. Uh, was the GM in Edmonton for three years. It was truly garbage. <laughs> he's so bad. <laughs> he was also involved in Boston and all their crazy trades. Uh, yep. he, he's truly bad. There's one man that would be worse. That would be Pierre Maguire. But I think he's currently ever palpatining his way into power in ottawa he's now totally, that there's a power he's vacuum. driving the ladder game of thrones style just yeah he's about to go pr on pr action just setting the stage with a corn dog Chaos you think he eats the corn dog as he's just mulling his his next move yeah like Roos bolton with the sausage yeah uh pierre mcguire would be truly the worst choice but i i I think he's trying to angle his way into to that Ottawa situation. He's got he's too got too much power with the two Pierre's. Uh, but Chia Pete, Chia Pete's name always always comes up in these searches. JD's really laughing at the Chia Pete name. <laughs> so good. That, uh, have you never heard that before? No, I'm just, the the picture. I'm sorry, the picture is oh. so good. I just I keep looking at it. It's... <laughs> this would this would be this would be garbage. This. This would set San Jose back into the dark ages. <laughs> Just fold the franchise. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so bad. Send him back to make it, send him back to Minnesota. Send him back to Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, no, Minnesota was Fenton. All these retread guys are no, bad. I, meant, I don't I want any the, of these retread. No, I meant the whole the whole organization. Sharks just send it back oh. to <laughs> Minnesota. Exhume, exhume Wayne Gunn the third body. Yep. Uh, please, please, none of these uninspired gm retreads like look around <laughs> look around the league like we like what montreal's doing with um hughes and gordon toronto's yeah. got dubis um uh detroit well tampa had hired eiserman he became awesome to detroit um colorado hired sackick who turned out to be to be really good um but then you look at other teams like seattle hired francis after carolina he's bit um a name we didn't put on there dale talon i'm sure he's lurking in the wilderness somewhere god no <laughs> GM. Yeah, these guys just these, these old GMs. There's there's 32 GM positions and apparently only 36 qualified people for them. Like it's insane. Yeah. Even Jeff Gordon in Montreal came from the Rangers. Like it, it's not like he was like. Oh, yeah, but Rangers are good at drafting too. So yeah, and like cool. Columbus hired Yarmo Kekalainen. Like I like that. Yeah. Do something. Do something. Do something interesting. Don't hire Chia Pete or Bergevin or. We're both of the co GMs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want it. None of it. <laughs> okay, you can find us on the internet. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll deep dive them when we know more information. But you yeah, once once the the names actually come out and so and so is coming for an interview, we'll. But we'll that's a good list. Them. You guys can research on your own and go look. That, that's a good yes. list. Those are real people that will. There's names inevitably will get brought up in the mix. Yep. Um, I guarantee you, at some point, we will hear all 14 of those names in some form or fashion. Um, and if we don't, then after the fact, it'll be like, well, they weren't available because Emily Castongate just got hired or something like that. Yep. But we put some thought into this. <laughs> Gia Pete, baby. Oh, I just, man, if they hired Gia Pete, that'd be too funny, though. I like full the franchise. The organization already is aware of us. They would be even more aware of us because we would just be mercilessly <laughs> making fun of them. Just tweeting at the fridge. <laughs> anyway. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Locked on Sharks, YouTube, Locked on Sharks, email Locked on Sharks at gmail.com. You can w- listen to us, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, Locked on Sharks. JD, my fry hole. Kyle, who gave up his Friday evening. 
I gotta clean. Come. My girlfriend's coming on Sunday. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hear from me. I'm gonna live tweet drunk off my ass. Uh, the Shark Canucks game tomorrow. You would You won't hear from tweeted. me for days. Yeah, I'm gonna lime tweet. What? You you had already live tweeted because by the time they hear this, it'll be Tuesday, and we're recording this on Friday. So, yeah, time. I'm- Hi, how does it's that a work? Bitch. <laughs> Magnets, how do they work? <laughs> Lasers. Uh, thank you for making us your first listen. Go check out Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Go check out the Locked On Angel Nows. Uh, go check out one of the other amazing podcasts on the Locked On Network, such as Locked On Knicks. Oh, I bet that's a train wreck good time so i'm sure the next guys are very good i'm just sure that podcast is yeah how do you just not kill yourself every day <laughs> bye <my> friends <laughs> okay bye